D E N O. How can we find out if that person is a person is planned by God for you? Write this down. Write this down. Now, 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 for anyone and also for the teachers, because the teachers have to teach. The first is this person is a real Christian. We are to ame mungu ame panga maisha ni mungu kama ni yeye kweli. Jambo la kwanza lazima awe ni Mkristo wa kweli. Not just a nominal Christian. Sio tu mtu wa kujiekelea Ukristo. Not just a Christian by name. Sio Mkristo tu wa jina, but a real Christian. Mkristo wa kweli. Because if the person is not a real Christian, na ikiwa mtu kama si Mkristo wa kweli, very soon after marriage, hivi karibuni baada ya kuoana, his non-Christian qualities will come out. He will stop you going to church. He will stop you going to church. Or stop you loving God. Or stop you giving offering to God. Okay, now let us read 2 Corinthians 6, 14. Do not be yoked together. Second Corinthians chapter four, verse sixteen. Now, four, fourteen to seventeen. We won't read the whole thing because of time. Do not be yoked together with unbelievers. For what do righteousness and wickedness have in common? Kwa jindi isivyo sawa sawa kwa kwa maana pa, pana urafiki gani kati ya haki na uasi tena pana shirika gani kati ya nuru na giza okay now what this verse is saying is don't be yoked up don't be paired up with a non-Christian. Kile huo mstari unasema ni kuwa usije ukafungiwa nira, usije ukahusishwa na watu ambao si wa Kristo. Now I have one time I met a Christian. Siku moja nimekutana na Mkristo. He argued with she argued with me. Alikuwa anapigana nami. And she said this is just yoking in business. Akasema hii tu ni kuungana kwa kibiashara. Not yoking, not pairing up in marriage. Sio kuungana kwa kindoa. Because she said if it's marriage, akasema ikiwa ingelikuwa ni marriage. The Bible verse, the Bible verse should say that this is about marriage. Biblia ingelisema haya mambo yasihusike kwenye ndoa. But the Bible verse did not say it's marriage. Lakini Biblia haikusema at hiyo ni ndoa. Just say don't be yoked up. Ilisema usije kufungiwa nira. But I told her, look at this verses from 14 to 17. Nikamwambia atizame hizi jumbe kutoka 14 hadi 17. There it says that what fellowship can light have with darkness? Inasema tena pia pana u Pana ulingani fugani kati ya giza na nuru. So what it means is that one person is in bright, in light, and the other person is in darkness. Hiyo inamanisha kwamba mtu mmoja yule ambaye ni Mkristo ako kwenye mwanga na huyu mbaya si Mkristo ako kwenye giza. How can they pair up? Je, waweza kuwaje pamoja? So this would apply to marriage. Je, pia inakuja kutimia kwenye ndoa. When a Christian and someone in darkness is pair up. Mtu akiwa ameunganisha na mtu ambaye si Mkristo, hiyo ni kuunganisha kwa giza na nuru. And then, now, Verse 15 and 16 is all about that. Okay, and then in verse 16, Now you are Okay, and then in verse 16, For we are the temple of the living God, I'll leave, read from here. As God has said, I will live with them and walk among them, and I will be their God, and they will be my people. Therefore, come out from them, be separate says the Lord, touch no unclean thing, I will receive you. Kumina sita inasema tena, para mapatano gani kati ya hekalu la mungu na sanamu, kwa maana sisi tu hekalu la mungu alie hai. Kama mungu alivyo sema, ya kwamba nitaka ndani yako na kati yao nitatembea, nami nitakuwa mungu wao, nao watakuwa watu wangu. 
So this Bible verse doesn't just talk about business. There it says in verse 17, come out from them. Inasema kumi na sababu kwamba kwa hivyo tokeni hati kwa and be separate. Mte mukatengwe nao. Touch no unclean thing. Asema bwana msikuze kitu kilicho chafu and I will receive you nami nitawakaribisha So what it says is that come out from them Lile inalosema ni kwamba ujiondoe ujitenge nao Do not live with the non Christians Usije ukaishi na watu wasioamini and be separate jitenge nao and don't touch the unclean thing. Now, why did God tell us that? The reason is when we live with sinners, their sin will affect us. If you live with people who commit adultery all the time, if you live with people who chase after girls everywhere, if you live with people who talk in a filthy way, if you live with people who have sins, now some sins are not so obvious. Maybe they have pride. Pengine ni watu wana kiburi tu. Or anger. Ni wale ama ni wale wana asira. Or lust. Ama ni wale wana tama. It will affect our life. Itakuja kutuduru pia. And also our life cannot go higher and higher. Na hivyo maisha yetu haiwezi panda hatua hatua hadi ingine. We cannot follow God's perfect plan. Hatuwezi fuata mpango wa Mungu mbema. Let me ask you again. Wacha niulize tena. Do you believe God is in control of everything? God's plan is the best for you. Yes. Psalm 24 verse 1. The earth is the Lord's and everything in it. The world and all who live in it. So this is Psalm 24 1. That everything belongs to the Lord. Everything in the world belongs to the Lord. Everything in the world belongs to the Lord. And then also Revelation 2:23. And ufunuo mili ishirini na mili. The second part of it. 2:23. The second part of it. Ufunuo mili ishirini na tatu. Then all, then all the churches will know that I am he who searches hearts and minds and I will repay each of you according to your deeds. There it says that God searches your hearts and your minds. And he will repay each one of you according to your deed. He will search our hearts he knows your heart right now now if you say yes I don't want to follow God's plan just with your mouth God knows it God knows your heart and your life so I hope you say Lord I want to be following you so even at my yakamba would say my mungu na tamani mukufuata because everything belongs to the Lord. Kwa sababu kila kitu kina ni cha mungu. Our life belongs to the Lord. Masheetu ni ya mungu. Our health belongs to the Lord. Masheetu ni ya mungu pia. Money belongs to the Lord. Pesa na pesa na mali zote ni za mungu. Good marriage belongs to the Lord. Joa nzuri na mipango mizuri yote ni ya mungu. Everything belongs to the Lord. Kila kitu ni cha mungu. When you follow God, ukimfuata mungu, He will give all things to you. Atapeana vitu vyote kwako. 
Do you believe? Je unaamini hivyo? God's plan is the best. Okay, now I tell you how to discern a person whether the person is planned by God. The first, whether he is a real Christian, he or she is a real Christian. If someone says, well, if you marry me, I'll go to church. Is he a Christian yet? Did they say no? Okay. Now, if they are not going to church yet, they are not a Christian yet. Even, even if they go to church, are they necessary Christians? Not necessarily. He or she shall. Some people go to church. And they don't pray. They don't trust in God. They don't obey God. They just they like the friendship. Are they real Christians? No. No. So we want to see where they have real Christian life. That's the first thing. To, you know, some girls say, I, have, I want to rush into marriage because if not, I won't get married. <laughs> Sometimes people will say, I want to rush into marriage, if not, no one will like me. Okay. So many people enter sexual relationship or men enter marriage because they are afraid they won't find someone else. God has a plan for you, will that person run away? Will the person run away? No. That person will come to you. Because God is in control of everything. When you seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things, things will be added to you. So I hope you believe this verse. When we care about the kingdom of God, that we want to bring more people into the kingdom of God. That's the first meaning of kingdom of God. You want more people saved. Secondly, where Jesus is the king, there is his kingdom. So your heart is the kingdom of God when you obey God. Do you want to obey God? Let me tell you, I dare not disobey God. Because if I disobey God, God will know my heart. And God will stop my ministry. And also what I do will be in vain. So I hope you know that to obey God is very, very, very important. But I obey God not because of fear. I obey God because I know God is very good. He has all kinds of blessings. I want to live in God's love and His blessings. And I enjoy following God. I enjoy God's presence. Let me tell you, I 
enjoy God all the time. Wacha niwaambieni jambo moja. Mimi hufurahi katika Bwana kila wakati. Any time I think of God, wakati wote nikiwazia Mungu, His love and His joy will flow through me. Upendo wake na rehema zake utiririka ndani yangu. And I can feel his power. Na huwa nahisi uwepo wake. I don't want to walk away from God. Na sitaki kutoka karibu na Mungu. And then when I follow God, na ninapomfuata Mungu, God will arrange for you the best that can happen to you. Mungu anapaka mambo mazuri kutendeka maisha ni mwako. Just now the test for the person God has planned for you first <laughs> He has to be a real Christian. Turejele ile kujua mtu kweli ni yule ambaye Mungu amekupangia. Jambo la kwanza lazima awe ni Mkristo wa kweli. Number 2, jambo la pili. This person has the life of God and love people. Huyu mtu ana maisha ya Mungu na anapenda watu. Now one time I saw a guy and a girl hugging Siku moja niliona mtu niliona kijana mmoja na msichana waki wakikumbatiana mtaani. They were enjoying themselves. Walikuwa wanakumbatiana mtaani wakitembea. And the guy was talking on the phone. Na msichana na yule kijana alikuwa anaongea kwa simu. I think he was talking with his mother. Nafikiri alikuwa anaongea na mamake kwa simu huko kwa kumbatia jinsi alivyokuwa anaongea na this is what he said na haya ndiye aliyesema don't talk to me so much usiniongeleshe sana i will come out later nitakuja nyumbani baadaye you talk too much unaongea sana i know it must be someone from the family naamini huyo mtu alikuwa karibu wa karibu wa familia yao and the person may be talking a lot na mtu pengine alikuwa anaongea sana huyo mtu so probably the mother the mother usually had a tendency pengine huyo alikuwa mamake kwa maana wa mama ndio huwa na kujali sana so this young man treated his mother in a very contemptuous way huyo kijana alimchukulia mamake kwa kawaida sana but this girl just hang on to this guy kwa hivyo huyo kijana huyo msichana baada huyo kijana baada ya kumchukulia mamake kwa kawaida hivyo huyo msichana bado alikuwa anamkubalia anamkubalia huyo kijana anakaa naye kwa karibu she enjoys this guy alikuwa anahisi vizuri akiwa karibu na huyo kijana because this guy yell at his mother kwa sababu huyo kijana alikuwa anampigia mamake kelele kwa sababu anawamalizia muda wao wa pamoja in order to stay with her na alitaka kukaa na yeye that means he loved Loves the girl more than the mother. Hiyo ni kumaanisha huyu kijana alimpenda msichana kuliko mamake. And the and the guy is very the girl is very happy. Na huyo msichana alikuwa anafurahia kuona hayo. But let me tell you. Lakini wacha nikwambie kitu moja. When a guy can talk to the mother like that. Ikiwa huyo kijana alikuwa anaongelesha mamake jinsi hiyo. After the marriage what will he do? Baada ya ndoa yeye atafanya namna gani? What will he do after marriage? Yeye atafanya namna gani baada ya ndoa? He will talk the same way to this girl after marriage. Atakuwa anampigia kelele hizo hizo baada ya kumuoa. He will say don't nag me. Don't make me come. Atakuwa anamwambia usinipigie kelele usindalamikie mimi nirudi nyumbani. Because if a guy would say talk to people so impolitely, ikiwa mtu ataongea ataongelesha watu kwa ukali jinsi hiyo, he would do the same thing to this girl. Atafanya mambo hivyo hivyo baada ya kuoa huyo msichana. Now why? Mbona? Because as I said today earlier, kwa sababu jinsi nilivyosema mapema leo, for guys kwa wana wanaume dating is a project kutumbiana ni mradi tu the guy want to win the girl kutumbiana yeye mwanaume anataka kumpendeza na kumshinda msichana win the body akae na yeye ashinde au chukue mwili wake does he really love the girl je huyo mtu wa mtamaa ya mwili anampenda yeye msichana kweli Real Christians who wa, learn to love people wa Kristo wa kweli watajifunza kupenda watu and learn to love the girl na watajifunza kumpenda huyo mchana but very often lakini kwa kawaida sana even Christians guys hata wa Kristo wa kiume when they date wakiwa kwenye kutubiana this is what they think about hii ndio wanayoifikiria na I hope you don't mind me being sh- saying it out very clearly na natumai hauta gwasika nikilisema waziwazi and the guy would say when can i hold her hand 
That is in his mind. When can I hug her? When can I kiss her? When can I touch her? When can I go to bed with her? What I'm saying, is it true? Is it true? Yes. Because in the mind of a guy, it's a project to win the girl's body. Now there are Christians who really love God who will refrain from premarital sex. But they really have to be taught by the pastors, by the church. Like what I'm teaching you right now. That's why I say it's very important for the pastors to learn this. To teach to the guys. Don't think that when you gain the girl's body that you have gained something good. What happened is when you have premarital sex you are giving in to the devil and you are giving the devil a chance to attack you. And also, even for Christian guys and girls, after they have sex, sometimes they won't get married. And according to the Bible, they will make each other adulterers. Yet they have both committed adultery. Now even premarital sex, that is, that is adultery, because they are not married yet. So if you see a guy, he doesn't treat people nicely. He doesn't care about people. He doesn't love God. One day he will hurt you the same way. And the third thing you want to see, whether this guy is willing to communicate with you. I want to tell all the unmarried girls here, try to guide your, if you have a boyfriend, try to guide him to talk about himself, talk about your feelings. Whether he is willing to communicate and help him to enjoy the communication. Now, I said earlier, guys have a tendency not like to communicate about the feelings. But if a girl has learned how to guide a girl, guide the guy to communicate about his feelings and accept his feelings and make him feel good then he'll learn to communicate this is something for the girls to learn to do with the guy and when you can do that then you can build up a healthy relationship you understand me? For instance, you can ask him. How do you feel about it? Do you feel unhappy? Or unhappy? Do you feel it's unfair? What do you think about God? What do you think about your parents? What do you think about Jesus? What do you think about the 
the heaven and the church talk about different things to know whether this guy can learn to communicate. Now sometimes before marriage they will talk. But, uh, but after marriage they don't have interest like in Very often it's because the girls start to nag too much. So girls have to learn to give space to the guy. And to respect him. Now this is a lot of teaching. It's hard to teach all this in one day. But you can ask me questions. So you see whether this guy is willing to communicate. Okay. Now, the next thing you want to see is whether this, you know, how this person look at God. Does he believe in God and follow God? Does he want to put God in the marriage? Does he want to have a godly life and follow God's will? If he's someone like that, he's very beautiful. Now what if he's not like that? Then you want to guide him. Help him to grow in Jesus. Help him to grow in Jesus. And now, sometimes you say, it's too hard. But I want to say to you, don't use romance to pull him to you. If he just wants romance, if he just wants romance, he doesn't want Jesus, stop the relationship. Or, you know, He's not interested in you trying to track him to church, trying to track him to, to spend time together. What happened is the girl would have attachment to the guy. And one day, even though when he sees there's a lot of problem with the guy, he'll still marry him. Now, so what I'm saying is, don't just marry anyone who says he'll marry you. If you want to follow God's will, but let me tell you, I have taught many young people about this. But they, when they come across a handsome guy or a guy who likes her, very often she forgets everything I told her. Everything I told her left her mind. When she sees a guy look at her, I love you. I like you. I want you. Come out with me. She forgets everything. And that's how she forgets everything. And that's how she forgets Will you forget everything I talk about tonight? Today? Or you say to follow God's will is the best? Yes. Now, it all depends on whether you want God's plan. Let me tell you, when my, when my first wife passed away, at that time, I really Think of not getting married and just go on the mission field, take my luggage and go from one place to another. That was my plan. Because I saw that many women have a lot of emotional problems. 
men and women, wanake wengi, sometimes get unhappy, angry easily. Huwa wanakasirika kwa haraka sana. Now it's not always true. Siyo kawaida kwa bili. But women who grew up in a lot of frustration, a lot of hurt feelings, wanawake waliokuwa waliokuzwa katika mazingira ya uhali mgumu, hali ya mateso na kudhalilishwa, they will have a lot of emotional problems. Watakuwa na uchungu ndani ya mioyo zao. And I want to be able to do my ministry without all these emotions. Na nilihitaji kufanya huduma yangu bila kuzuiwa na hizo hali za hasira na uchungu. So I said God, I just want to stay single. Kwa hivyo niliambia Mungu nataka kuishi peke yangu. I hope you can say it's okay to be single. Nafikiria utaweza sema ni vizuri kukuwa ukiishi peke yako. Actually Paul said in 1st Corinthians, Paulo anasema kwa Korinto wa kwanza, a single person dedicate his or her life to Jesus. Anaishi peke yake upeana maisha yake kwa Mungu. While a married person will have to dedicate much time to the family. Lakini yule mtu ambaye ameoa ama ameolewa atahitaji kupeana maisha yake kwa jamii yake. Now that was my thinking. Na hiyo ilikuwa ndiyo fikra yangu. But God is a plan in heaven. Lakini Mungu ana mipango juu mbinguni. God plan for me this wife. Mungu alipanga huyu mke awe mke wangu. I want to tell you that. Nataka nikwambie kuwa I did not chase after her. And she did not chase after me. It just, we just, it's just like we met and then, I mean we talked and then it just happened. But I won't let romance guide us. I pray to God. This is how I pray. God, if it is your will, Mungu ikiwa ni mapenzi yako. Please accomplish the will. Tafadhali itimisha mapenzi yako. If it is not your will, na ikiwa si mapenzi yako, stop it with your almighty power. Isimamishe kwa nguvu zako. Because I don't want anything to destroy my ministry for you. I don't want anything to destroy my ministry. And I pray to God. God showed by many ways that she is the person God has planned for me. And I found that she doesn't have an emotional problem. Among other good qualities. So I want to say to the young people here. You want to prepare yourself to be to be good person to get into marriage. Many people are not ready into marriage. Because they don't love God. They have emotions. I'm unhappy. I'm sad. I'm angry. When they haven't learned to handle their emotions. When they have dating or marriage, they will enter bigger troubles. Or they don't know how to handle relationship with people. So I hope you see that it's very important that we prepare ourselves. To love the Lord. Kumpenda Mungu. To be peaceful in the Lord. To be able to handle different problems. To love God and love people. To have good qualities of a Christian. That way I tell you. You'll be a very attractive person. And in your marriage. You know how to build up the marriage. Utakuja kujua jinsi ya kukua baada ya kuoa. 
So the very important thing now. Ask you again. Do you believe in God's will? Je, unaamini katika mapenzi ya Mungu? Do you want to follow God's will? Je, unatamani kufuata mapenzi ya Mungu? Do you want to give up the guy or the girl who looks attractive but who don't follow God? Je, unataka kumwacha mtu ambaye anakaa ni mzuri lakini hafuati Mungu? Je, uko tayari kuachana na mtu ambaye anakaa ni mzuri yes lakini hafuati Mungu? But I tell you, it's very difficult. Because the society and your family will give you pressure. Now let me tell you, in Hong Kong, we have many single Christian women. They could not find a Christian guy to marry. And they choose to stay single. When I go to different countries, I found that many in many countries people have to get married because of the family pressure. That the social system is you have to get married. Like, like last time I brought some women to come along to the, to the mission field in Kenya and the, and the Christians here keep telling calling the women mama I said they're not mamas they're single and then the, the Christian said, they are women, how come they are not mamas? They think every woman has to be married. Now Paul said, no. Do you want to follow the Bible or follow the society? Now, I want to say first talk to the parents here. Don't pressure your children to get married if they don't find a Christian husband or guy. Don't force your children to get married because when you force your children to get married, it's like you're forcing your children not to follow God. So for the parents here, we have to say no to the society's pressure. I pray for God's strength to us all here. That we can say no to society pressure. Let me ask you again. Do we have to get married? Do we all have to get married if you don't find a Christian spouse? Very good. I hope this will become a movement in Kenya. That you say, as a Christian, we don't find a Christian spouse, it's better to stay single. It's more important to follow God's plan. Do you are you willing? Yeah, Okay, let us stand up to pray. Oh dear Heavenly Father. We need your help. We need your help. We need God's help. 
We need God's help to face the society's pressure. Tunahitaji usaidizi wa Mungu ili tuweze kukumbana na sinikizo za jamii. Lord have mercy on the Christians. Mungu tuonee huruma kwa Wakristo. That we can stand firm with our faith. Ili tuweze kusimama thabiti na imani yetu. That we are willing to follow God's teaching. Tuwe watu wanaotamania kufuata maandiko na mafundisho. Give us strength, O oh Lord. Tupe nguvu Mungu. That we want to follow God's plan. Ili tunapotaka kufuata mipango za Mungu. We believe God's plan. Tuamini mipango za Mungu. We follow God's plan for our life. Tufuate mipango za Mungu kwa maisha yetu. Because God's plan is the best. Kwa sababu mipango ya Mungu ni mema. Now let you have a minute to you pray to God. Wacha ukachukua muda uende mbele za Bwana mwambie Mungu unahitaji. You say to God. Mwambie Mungu, please guide me. Mwambie Mungu tafadhali Mungu niongoe. And give me strength. Nipe nguvu Mungu. So I won't give it to so I won't give into adultery or premarital sex. Then I won't give into marrying a non-Christian. Then I want to follow God's will. Okay, let's raise up our hand. Is there any point where the times like this is Just speak to God. Okay, let's talk to God. Oh Lord Jesus, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Your will be done. Say it together. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. That your will will be done in Kenya. In our lives. We don't have to give in to pressure. Because God has a wonderful plan. God cares about us. God raise up your hand to God. I'm willing to follow your plan. I'm willing to follow your plan. I'm willing to submit to you. God, I need you. God, I need you. Lord, I need you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Work in our heart. Praise the Lord. Your name be glorified. Give us strength. Help us to be holy. Help us to be holy. Help us to be glorifying God. Help us to follow God in the place of Jesus, we need you. We glorify your name. Thank you, Jesus. Asante Yesu. You care about us. You care about us. You want to bless us. You have a wonderful plan in our lives. You love each one of us. Help us not to fall into the trap of Satan. Help us not to give Satan a foothold. Give us strength, Lord. Give us strength. That we stand for. That stand for. That we say no to Satan. To shield them all. We say no to premarital sex. We say no to adultery. We want to follow God's perfect plan. Live the perfect life of God. And then our whole life will be enjoyable. In Jesus' name, give Christians the strength to fight against Satan, to fight against adultery and marital sex, to live in holiness. Thank you, Jesus.
Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Let me tell you. See, there's one very effective way. This is a tech on Christian's marriage. Anna, yari mungu ba mi anoa zawa Christo. It's a tech on, you know, to give Christians fall into adultery or premarital sex. Anna, anna simikizo kwa Christo kutipata katika hali ya uzindi na kona za kama pe. That is Satan's very effective way. Na hizo ni mipango za bidi za jistani. It starts from you to fight back. Anna, tega ni vizuri wewe kusimama imara kupigana na azo. Okay, God bless you all. Mungu wa wabariki sana. Hallelujah.